Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of For Real. Thanks also to everyone that came along and joined us for the live stream on Sunday. It was really fun. We enjoyed talking to all of you about all things Cambodia and Siem Reap, things that are going on here, things that are going on where you live. It was great to catch up. So thanks again for joining us, those of you that could, and for everyone that watched afterwards too. So today we've decided to try something new. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to talk to you about some things that are going on in Cambodia in the news at the moment. And while I do that, Jeremy is going to ride around Siem Reap. So you'll be able to look at where he's going and enjoy um, the surrounding area. If you don't feel like listening to the news or you don't care, um, or you'd rather just watch the footage without um, the sound, feel free to turn it down and just enjoy the ride. I know not everyone wants to hear about COVID and masks and vaccines. So <laughs> that's what the update's going to be about. If that's not your bag, feel free to skip it. Turn the volume down and just enjoy beautiful Siem Reap. Where to start? There's been a lot happening, but in some ways not much. So the February 20 incident where the women escaped from quarantine by bribing the guards has resulted in nearly a thousand cases. So numbers are still going up and Tuesday this week was the biggest day so far for COVID cases in Cambodia. We had 105 people tested positive for the virus, so new cases on that day. Maxing over 100 is um, way more than we've had to date. And then today it was down a little bit, but still at 75, which is much higher than we've previously seen. There's a music production company here called Hang Mias, and they manage some of the largest, uh, the best known Cambodian singers. And they've had quite a few cases amongst their artists, so well-known singers and entertainers have tested positive. So they're calling that the um, celebrity cluster. Um, I'm sure those people are being quite well taken care of, but it's done a lot to raise the profile of um, people that are testing positive and I've done a lot to reduce the stigma as well because people are feeling like, you know, if it can happen to them, then it can happen to anyone. So um, in that way, I suppose it's, it's positive. Most of the new cases have been uh, identified in Kandal province. And if you're not aware of where that is, it's um, a province that surrounds Phnom Penh. So you've got Phnom Penh and then Kendal province goes around, um, completely around the outside of it. So it borders um, all, all sides of Phnom Penh. And it's where a lot of the garment factories are located and also where the, a lot of the casinos are located. So I guess land just outside the capital is a bit cheaper. So that's why those things pop up in those places. But um, Yes, they have had quite a number of cases in that area and there were some people that were being quarantined in a casino and that was um, why the numbers were so high on Tuesday, I think, because um, the people that were quarantined in the casino weren't staying in the rooms like they were supposed to. They were just getting out and about, hanging out with, with each other and just generally having a good time um, like they weren't actually there for COVID. Moving down to Sihanoukville, things seem to have slowed down a little bit with cases um, in that area, but there are still a lot of people in quarantine uh, waiting for the outcome of their 14 day test. And just the other day, <laughs> there was a news report that four Chinese guys and two Cambodians tried to escape Sihanoukville by speedboat. So they know that all the roads are closed and that they'll probably get caught if they tried to go over land. So they thought, well, let's get in a speedboat and see if we can get around it that way. But there was a water chase by the water border police and they were caught, um, detained, questioned and put back in their quarantine where they belong. In other news, there's been some new laws that have been passed. So they were pushed through quite quickly and uh, I'll just talk you through some of the big changes that those laws um, are bringing in. So the first one is to do with masks. So you now have to wear a mask in all designated public places. But the problem with that is that we don't know what constitutes a designated public place. So we're just defaulting to basically whenever you leave the house, wear a mask. But there hasn't been anything said about what's a public place and what's not. So it's a bit difficult to know what that actually covers. Um, having said that, mask wearing has visibly increased and just if you go down the street to the market or if you're riding around, you see that most people are wearing masks now. It used to be that the majority of people were not, but it's flipped 
and now it's um it's the exception to the rule to see people not wearing masks which is great um i guess they're scared of being fined and the way it's working is that the first time that you're caught not wearing a mask in one of these public places then you'll be given a warning and after that you can receive a fine so this is for local people and um expats so the fines range from $50 to $250. I don't know what determines um, where in that range your fine would fall. Maybe it's about which, um, which number of which number of fence you're up to in that. So yeah, $50 to $250 is a lot for these people. And I can see that spending a couple of hundred real on a mask is preferable to running the risk of a $50 fine. Um, but even the 500 reel or the couple of hundred reel that it costs to buy a mask is going to add up after a while. So that's to do with masks. The next thing that was in the new laws is about organizing an event. So if you organize an event and um, it has a gathering that's um, more people than there should be, then you can be fined from $250 to $1,250 for that. If you're running a business without performing your obligations, so if you're running like a restaurant or something and you're not doing temperature checking or um, enforcing people to wear masks, then you can be fined from $500 to $250, oh sorry, $2,500. Um, you can also be closed down. So there's things, there's administrative things that they can do as well as the fining. Um, Escaping quarantine is another thing that can get you a fine under the new laws and the fine is um, in one of two categories depending on whether your escape causes other people to become infected. So if you escape and cause the spread of the virus you can be fined um, at a different rate to people who just escape and don't cause any spread of the virus. So I don't know how long they would have to wait in order to decide which of those categories you fell into. So yeah, interesting, interesting on paper and interesting to see how it would be um, actually enforced. If you help someone escape from quarantine, this has got the biggest fine in all of the laws as far as I could see when I had a look through. So helping someone escape from quarantine can cost you from two and a half thousand dollars to $12,500 and that is a significant amount of money for anyone so definitely would um, think twice think three times before you help someone escape from quarantine now that these new laws have been passed the vaccination side of things has kind of quietened down a little bit recently um, I'm reading a news article right now that says that um, teachers are now going to be vaccinated in Phnom Penh and four provinces um, of Kandal, Prevang, Kokong and Sihanoukville. So that's a good thing, makes sense to vaccinate the teachers. It's just not clear how the rest of the rollout is going to be um, facilitated. At least, I mean, and with all of these things, not clear to me as a foreigner reading the news that I can get my hands on. There's probably plenty of information out there that I can't access. So um, yeah, take what I say with a grain of salt. There's a news article just came out today saying that the Ministry of Cult and Religion has banned any religious ceremonies and gatherings until further notice. So that's an important thing to note. And just a last thing on the vaccine front, uh, 1.5 million more doses of Sinovac will be arriving in Cambodia in the near future. And that's in addition to the Sinopharm that we already have and the AstraZeneca. And Cambodia is also looking to buy Johnson & Johnson vaccines as well. So there's a bit of a um, concern that there's a shortage at the moment. And because the cases are still rising and rising quite quickly, uh, people are sort of starting to get um, quite, quite anxious about how quickly they're going to be able to get vaccinated. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this little update and watching Jeremy ride around Siem Reap. And if you like this format, let us know and we'll keep doing these kind of videos. Um, it's a good way to keep us up to date because we have to kind of look at what's going on in order to get the main facts together to tell you. So it's helpful for us in that way. And also, um, hopefully it's interesting to you because you get to hear a little bit about what's going on and see the progress in the um, 38 Roads project as Jeremy rides around as well. Thank you so much for watching. 
Um, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe and the reason that we ask you to do that is because the more likes, subscribes, people watching ads in our content and everything, the more uh, revenue that we will build up. And as you know, as Jeremy has said quite a few times, we do intend to give away any money that we get through YouTube. We might get a payout at the end of March. There's a few kind of conditions that you have to meet and a lot of hoops that you have to jump through in order to make that happen. So we may be eligible to get the first payment at the end of March. And we're hoping that that's the case so that we can start passing on the money as we've promised to do. Well, that brings us to the end of another video. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, we always appreciate everyone who stays right to the end. It means a lot to us to know that you've stuck it out for a full 10 minutes. So check out the links below. We've got links to um, all of our social media, links to all of the vlogs that we follow, all of the YouTubers that we follow, both um, in Cambodia and elsewhere. So check those out if you're interested. There's some great stuff there. We watch um, almost exclusively YouTube, so we can vouch very, very highly for the people that are listed there. So uh, that's it for this one, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.